Hi everyone, I'm just creating this new tutorial for everyone to have a look at how it's possible to export a model from SketchUp into Unreal 4. So the first step you, you need to do, I guess, is to make sure that your models have their front faces facing outwards. So I've got three objects here. I've got a, a wall with timber panelling. I've got a cup, which is, has some very badly tiled uh, tiles on it, stone tiles. And I've got a sphere, which has some bricks. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to make a copy of these over here. And I'm just going to paint all their faces with the, the default texture so that I can actually look at them and, and see whether they've got their front faces facing inwards or outwards. And they all have their front faces facing outwards. If they were, if they were, there was a, a back face showing, then you'd see this sort of grey or blue colour or whatever colour you've defined as your back face colour. So obviously we don't want to have that, so everything is good. And um, when, you, when you bring models into Unreal, they need to have their UV coordinates set. Uh, one of the biggest problems that people have when they export their SketchUp model into Unreal 4 is that um, when they build the lighting map, you get an error which says overlapping UV texture coordinates. Um, and that's basically because SketchUp uses a different texturing method than UV coordinates, which is sort of a, a, a standard for other software packages like 3D Studio Max and other, other gaming engines. So in order to counter this issue, what we need to do is we need to assign our objects with UV coordinates. And what I'm going to use today is this SketchUp UV plugin. Now if I go into the, um, the extension warehouse, and this is it here, and I'll just type in sketch UV. And so this is the this is the plugin here, sketch UV. So we want to have this loaded into our version of SketchUp. And as you can see, there's a couple of tutorial videos here which show you different methods of how it's done and, and they're they're very good. So if you need to uh, understand how the plugin works. Just um, watch a couple of these these um, YouTube videos. Now, so when you go to um, to apply a UV coordinate, all we need to do is just click on this tool here. And oh, sorry, we're going to go inside. Click on this tool here. And what I want to do is I want to select all faces. So just triple click. And when I right click, you can see there's several different modes that you can have for texturing your your model so in this particular case I'm going to use the box map so as you can see there we've got uh, we've got the box map coordinates attached to it for this one in particular here is um, we're going to map an, a spherical map to it so now you see on the little menu there where it says spherical and then in brackets view or oh, sorry, a cylindrical view, what you have to do is you have to actually align your view in order to get this mapping this mapping mode to work properly. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go up here and I'm going to go and look at it from the back side. Uh, no, no, I'm not. I'm going to look at it from the... I'm going to look at it from the left side. Okay, here we go. And I'll just run that again. Cylindrical map. Okay, and that's much better. So that's a more acceptable a more acceptable um, texturing pattern on that one. Uh, with the top though, what, we, what we'll do is we'll, we'll change that one so that just the top face has box mapped instead, like so. Okay, and then for the cylinder, for the, the sphere, so we'll do that again. So it was, we'll go to the left side, double click on that one, and in this, oops, sorry, in this one here, we're gonna click on spherical map. So what it does there is it maps that that's spherically quite neatly. So so you can actually save now these UV coordinates. Uh, it's all it's all saved in there, and you just need to go um, click on here and right click and go save UVs, and then you can apply your new texture and then load that UV coordinate again, and it'll remember these settings for you.
So that's quite that's quite useful. Um, this little this little rainbow color tool, and it just it just helps you see where your map is lined up and where there are seams and and so on. And you can actually alter the the size of this. So for example, if I just click on this and I just click on this again, and I'm going to right click. I oh, know I don't need to right click. I've, I've, I'm in that mode now. And what I can do is if I look down here, I can enter values to rotate UVs, um, or you can change the scale there by preceding things with a star or a hyphen. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a, I'm going to go star down the bottom here, star two. Oops. For some reason, didn't read the star. Let me just do that again. Star two. So as you can see now, what it's done is it's it's created the texture map so that it is now twice as twice as small on our on our shape there. But anyway, we don't need to do this step, so I'm just going to delete these now. Because what we can do is we can assign our coordinates to our object with its already textured. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to double click on it again, click on here, right click, and I'm going to go box map. So now as you can see what it's done is it's created the mapping uh, fairly large on my object. So I'm going to now do that star, I would say star 4. Let's see. Ah, there we go. Okay, so what we've done is now we've divided that texture map so that it will repeat four times over our over our object as opposed to just the one. When we go to this one here, we need to go and look at it from side on. So I'm going to click that, click on there, and apply the cylindrical, uh, sorry, the cylindrical map, like so. It looks a bit too big for that, so I'm going to do again. I'm going to go star four, just so it looks a bit nicer. Maybe another star two. Yeah, I think that looks all right. And the top face here, we're going to apply the box map like that, and we'll just go star two for that one. Yeah, there we go. That's good. And then for our sphere, which has this very awkward looking brick, I'm going to go and look at it from the side and go to spherical map. Okay, and we'll go star five, say for example. No, we'll go star two again. So that's better. Yeah, okay. So we have those three objects now, which uh, have now been assigned UV coordinates. And there's just one more step we need to do before we start exporting our objects into Unreal 4. And that is for the cup and for the sphere, we need to actually tri triangulate the object. If we don't triangulate it, then what happens in Unreal is that we get a whole series of materials, which are just little, basically little squares, uh, in order to texture our, our our little sections, which are on our on our cup or on our sphere. So what we need to do is we need to triangulate. So we'll use the tool again to do that, and we just click select triangulate from the list. And same with the sphere. Oops. Triangle. Okay, so now we're ready to actually export these into Unreal 4. So there are three, there are two ways, sorry, that you can export it from SketchUp. This is SketchUp Pro. From SketchUp into Unreal, you can use uh, the FBX file format or the OBJ. I prefer the OBJ file format just simply because when it does the export, things are linked to the um, to the models that you're sending out, but the textures are put into a separate folder. Whereas with FBX, you have to manually grab everything and put it into the same folder as the the model, and then do the import, and then you can separate it out. So it's just like a, a like an extra step. So let me just show you how to do an OBJ export. So if I go to export, 3D model, and we'll just save this onto the desktop, and OBJ. So when we go into here, we want to export the texture maps. We don't want to swap the Y, Z coordinates 
for the when you're formatting when you're exporting to FBX, you do want to have that ticked. Uh, we don't need to do anything else. Units as centimeters. Go OK. And export. Just gives you a little summary there. If you have have a look here, where it says three materials. That's important that we've only got three materials there. If we didn't triangulate, then we'd have maybe 300 materials because it would create a, a little material for every one of the of the faces of of the objects. So let's just click on OK and OK. So we're basically now ready to go into Unreal. So let me just open up Unreal. So I've just got a little test test uh, floor that I've put got here, and rather than going up here and going import into level. I find that that actually crashes Unreal for, on my computer. So if, if so, if you do it from the Contents Browser, browser it uh, it is a lot better. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to add a, an extra a new folder, and I'm going to call that Import. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Import, and I'm going to go to our OBJ here. Open. And don't need to do anything much here. Let's just click on import all. Okay, so there's our object there, and there's the textures that it's brought in, and also the materials that it's created. So now if I just bring that in and put that, uh, let's say, right here. Oh, we might need to just um, rescale our object a little bit here. Let me just click on this thing here and we'll just um, let's just scale this so that's bigger okay and I'll just look at it from this side just so it's a little bit better yeah okay and so there's our there's our three objects imported into now you can see, uh, okay, this is one thing here. You see this little purple line here, which is around our three objects. What that is is actually a, it's a collision object. So it stops you from actually walking through those gaps there. So that could be a problem later on when you go to play. So if I just go to, if I go to play, oh, it says we need to rebuild the lighting. Let's rebuild the lighting. Hopefully there'll be no errors in the, in the rebuilding of the lighting because that's what been, that's one of the main issues that occurs. So it's just rebuilding it now. Let's give it a few seconds. We can actually walk around this, of course. Yeah. So as you can see, when I try to move through this gap, I can't because there is a collision object which is created when you automatically. Um, yeah, import something into Unreal from SketchUp. So, so what we can do to get rid of that is let's just go to our Unreal export and we're just going to edit. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn these turn the collision on, and we're going to click on it, and we're going to delete it. Okay, and then we're just going to save that and exit. And so now, oops, let's apply our lighting, which has been built. Let's just move up a bit so we can just see what we're doing. Okay. So now, when we go to play, we should be able to walk through. And we can. Good. So yeah, so that's basically how you do it. It's not, it's not really a, a big issue that... Uh, I've noticed on some some groups they they seem to say that uh, SketchUp is is terrible for exporting into Unreal, but you just need to follow that particular step, and generally speaking, you shouldn't have any issues. So uh, I hope that's helpful to someone, and um, 